For me, one of the most frustrating aspects of making bows is holding the darn wood still whilst I work upon it. Today, I hope to solve that problem. I've tried many ways of securing my staves whilst working on them with draw knives and spoke shaves, but none have been especially successful. So today I'm going to make myself something called a shave horse, an ancient style of foot operated vice. A shave horse is a three legged bench with a foot operated treadle that clamps the workpiece in place, leaving the hands totally free. These simple woodworking aids have been in use for centuries in woodlands and workshops and can be adapted to the work in hand. The one I'm making will be suitable for working bow staves and I'm going to make it entirely from wood, scavenged from the workshop and also from woodland and hedgerow. There are numerous types of shave horse and you can download plans if you wish from the internet and follow these in detail. Mine, however, is just being made from sketches I've made myself. So my first job is to cut the bench to length. Next, the legs. I'm cutting these from a piece of deadfall ash. So those are the parts that make the bench. Next, I'm going to cut the component parts for the foot treadle. This is a piece of yew. It's an offcut from a bow stave. I'm going to use this as the foot bar. This is an offcut of holly. I'll use this to make the yoke. That is, the piece of wood that bears down on the workpiece. I'll also use holly to make the pegs to act as a spindle around which the treadle will move. This piece of wood needs no further work at the moment. This will be the table upon which the workpiece sits. So from this piece of elm, I'm going to cut the final piece of this shave horse. From this, I'm going to make the wedge. So those are the major parts of my shave horse. The bench, the legs, the foot treadle and the workbench. Now I've got to start joining them all together. So my first job is to build the bench and to do that I should be turning these pieces of ash into legs. Currently the ends look like this, rough and unfinished. This is what I want to do to them. So I've only got bow making tools with which to shape this leg. I'll be using a draw knife and a rasp. This is exactly the sort of job that is made much easier with a shave horse. So 
the next stage is to drill three holes in the bench which act as sockets for the legs. Now the legs on a shave horse are slightly splayed, not dissimilar to how the legs are set on this workbench. The correct way to set the angle is with a bevel gauge, but I haven't got one, so I'm going to do this entirely by eye. Now I am setting these angles by eye, but I've put myself some guidelines on the bench just to help me. So that's the shave horse bench now finished. The next job is the treadle. Now the simplest way to understand the treadle and clamp assembly is to imagine a short three rung ladder. The bottom rung is your foot bar, the middle rung is the spindle around which the whole assembly moves and the top rung is the clamp that holds the workpiece in place. The simplest way to make a treadle and clamp assembly is to use three dowels, one for the foot bar, one for the spindle and one for the clamp. But the pieces of wood I'm using are off cuts, they're slightly wonky and a little bit bent. So none will make a straight and long spindle that will pass entirely through the bench and into the clamp assembly. So I've got to use my imagination a little bit. I start by rasping a two-sided rebate in the foot bar. These will slot into sockets on the lever arms. Next, I prepare the yoke ends to fit into sockets. I then prepare two pegs that will act as a spindle. Next, I drill holes in the bench and hammer in the spindle pegs. Then I work on the lever arms, marking and drilling out the sockets. I test fit the levers before checking the assembly. Finally, I make open sockets for the foot bar. Then, it's final assembly. check the angle and height of the table and then saw off the peg ends.
So that's the basic treadling clamp assembly now put together and fitted to the bench. The next and final major job is to fit this. This is the table against which the clamp operates. So I found that the original wedge that I cut, this one from Elm, is not really big enough to create the angle that I'm looking for on this table. So I've made another wedge, this one's blackboard, and it sits here and sets the table angle just as I'd like it. I shall be using this, a piece of hazel, to make a peg, or in fact two pegs, that fit through here into the bench and hold it in place and lock it whilst the pressure is applied to the clamp. To avoid the soles of my shoes slipping on the foot bar, I've bound it in coarse fibred cord. I've also added a pad of soft leather to stop the yoke marking soft woods such as you. And if it needs more, I have various other thicknesses of leather to put around it. So those are the finishing touches to my shave horse. Let's see how well it works. So although a shave horse will be a fantastic advantage to me in the workshop, it's here in the English open woodland that I think I will get the best and most use out of this ancient style of foot operated vice. Let's put some work on it. So this is a freshly cut piece of alder, just for me to learn the technique of using a shave horse. shave horse it cost me absolutely nothing to build except time around about six and a half hours to build a piece of kit that for me will be an incredible advantage during bow making i hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching and i'll see you next time <music>